Hello everyone, this is a Grey Shot 117 here. And Grey Shot 151. And we're doing a movie review of Baby Driver, a movie by Edgar Wright writing and directing this film after his departure from the Ant Man film. If you don't know the director, think of At World's End, Shaun of the Dead, and Hot Fuzz of the Cornetto trilogy. If you I think that's his most famous work, I would say. Yeah, I would say so as well. At least a re uh, recent, recent yeah. yeah. I know he's probably done other movies, but th those are the three that really stick out. Um, anyway, so, although I think Edgar Wright signed up... Anyway, I'll we'll move on to that later. Anyway, so Baby Driver is a film that he's been a personal project of his about a kid with tinnitus, a.k.a. a ringing in his ear. So he has a iPod they listen to music to while he uh, drives for uh, bank robbers and other types he's of... He's the getaway driver. Yeah, he's a getaway driver. And uh, does he drive well? Yes. yes. But he wants out of the job. He, I, he can't stand it. He wants out... So, uh, once he finds someone he cares about, he tries to figure out a way out of this, uh, crummy situation. Yeah, and, uh, boy, is there a lot of great characters in this, uh, where you have, uh... Kevin Spacey? Yep, uh... uh Ansel Elgort is, by the way, the lead, uh, Baby. That's, again, his name. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Was Fox. also pretty good. Pretty damn good. Oh, my... G okay. Jamie Foxx was like, I didn't know, like, I love to hate him. Yes. That's probably the best way to describe it. Are you alive? <laughs> like, he has some great quotable moments in this. Yeah, he does. <laughs> You're alive? Yeah. Then you haven't met me. <laughs> like, yeah. like there, I'm, again, no spoilers, but there's just a lot of great, there's a lot of great little things that just make this movie so good. Yeah, and the whole cast is just fantastic the story is fantastic yeah i couldn't think of a bad character i didn't like or wasn't well portrayed or didn't like and even also, the side characters like yeah. there is a a nephew in this yeah he's eight years old or four and he is absolutely fantastic he, he every character they introduce steals the steals the yeah. spotlight and it's hard because when they're all together, it's like, well, I don't know, they all steal the spotlight. It's really good. Yeah, and again, the whole story is about Baby, but you can't help but take your eyes off every other character because, uh, because or keep your, their eyes glued because they're just so entertaining. They're so interesting. Oh, they're Both good and bad ways. They're absolutely horrible people. Oh, yeah, all these people are terrible people. And every time you get a little ounce of humanity with them, like, oh, or okay. Humor. Just tear it down. Yep. But that's what makes this movie so entertaining. It's like, how is he going to get out of this world? Which they, at first they pointed, it's like, okay, this is like civilized. Yeah. But the further you watch this, the further you realize it's it's a dark, dark place yeah. he's in. And Edgar Wright does that. It seemed like, okay, it doesn't seem what ba bad what this he's doing. This is an Edgar Wright film. What I mean by that is, there there's is blood. There is violence. There's great action. But it will come at times and well, you're usually, just like, oh, Right. Usually Edgar Wright does comedies. Yeah. He's not, he never, he focuses a little bit There's on action. Good comedy in this, I would say. Not, yeah. oh, there were some, there was a few scenes in particular. Yeah. Uh, for instance, involving masks. Or oh, yeah. tapes. Yeah. Or things of that nature that are, I was laughing I think a lot. We, can we say, uh, babies, oh, we, let's just not go into more family, but let's just say that the, the side characters the around per, baby, yes, yes, are all fantastic. Again. Um, so what do we, again, great action, the, the score, there's a musical score to this, it's of older music, like, it also funny, when, there was one song popped up, I'm like, where do I know that? Oh, Wolfenstein! But it's just like, there's a ton of great musical choice in this, and each song matches the beat and what's going on, and that's something that it's hard to get down in a film, because sometimes the action scenes will add uh, a cool beat or something, but this is played into the actual movie. The like, any time you hear a score, he's listening to it, and yep. he's acting it out. So, and, he, and again, he'll even react to missing a beat. So, that stuff, it, it's just like, the tiniest detail really matters, and it pays off tremendously in this film. Yep. So, highly recommended. Probably gonna easily gonna be on our top, the, the top ten list for Grey Sharp Productions. Probably, I, I uh, don't want to. Yeah, there's a lot of good movies this year. A lot of good. There movies. is one. I think the first movie we saw this year. I still. I think it takes the cake. Still holds that extra. Yeah, edge. but here's the thing about this film. I will Spoilers. say. Spoilers. Uh, we are. Yeah. So uh, before we go, 
fantastic. Go check Go it out. It. I need a rating system for this for this score, like a five thing rating system. Five for... gray shots out of five. I'm actually curious what your opinion is of this movie, or no, just a rating scale in general. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. God damn you. Anyway, spoilers. I'll figure out something. Spoiler warning. Spoiler, spoiler, Spo spoiler. Spoiler warning on the review scale. It'll probably be out never. But on the movie on Baby Driver, let me just say, oh, God, it is so good. It is so good. There's one, my favorite scene in this movie. There are two. Is when they recon a bank with the nephew. Yep. And he is freaking hilarious. Yeah. He, <laughs> he has some great scenes. He he's, does. He's like... You know, uh, if you just go to her and you tell her, I want the, the bank money. Teller. Like, the or bank not, teller. Or I want the money. She's probably going to give it to you very quickly. Just she say won't... boo and she'll give you the highest bills. And this, it's just an eight-year-old saying this. She's like, takes after us. Like, takes after, you know, me. Like, I guess it runs in the family. And it's just like, oh my god. Or there's one moment where they said, get Michael Meyer masks. Which, yeah. if you don't know, Michael Meyer is the killer for from Halloween. They Guess get, what? They get they get Michael, Michael Meyer. Meyer mask, aka the guy who plays Shrek, and they have three. <laughs> so there are so three guys with Michael Meyer masks. The comedian, or basically, yeah. runs in. <laughs> it is one of the funniest scenes I think I've ever seen. And this is also after the the, the heist is done. Yeah, and they're still wearing the masks. Yeah. I ha I just kept laughing. But that being said, it was just well, so it's ridiculous. Great. There are scenes on this where it's like... It's a, dark. There's a dead guard. Oh, he le he left his weapon. There's a trail. Oh, that guy's dead. And then... Uh, there's other, a lot of dead people. And also, like, where J.B. Fox character just straight up mows down a bunch of people. Which is also hilarious because... Or kills a clerk. Because you think, oh, this guy's smart. And you, then once you get back to Kevin Spacey, who's like the mastermind behind the plans and everything, you realize, no, he's just a hot-headed idiot yep. and forgot to... Wasn't listening even after Baby was listening. He'd be like... Oh, yeah, the people you're going to, they're bad cops, but that's how you're getting the guns. Yeah. So he mows well, down a bunch of dead cops, which makes the police force very unhappy. Well, I'm sure they've not... I mean, I'm sure they're like, well, Why at least we can get, get them on a high note and not be, you know, have an investigation on dirty cops. Yeah, so here's a question. What do you think about Baby's relationship with uh, the girl? Debbie? Uh, Deb I thought it was good. It wasn't... Yeah. Okay, it was very sweet. Yes. Maybe I'm because I'm not a millennial. I don't have that edge to me that you know it just seemed like an instant attraction. It was a very a very convincing. It yeah. just wasn't the best love story I've seen. I've seen much more convincing love stories, but it was very very well done. Both actors do an admirable job, and you definitely feel the connection between the two. Yes. Uh, and what do you think about Baby's relationship with his uh, stepfather? Oh my God, best part of the movie. Yeah, it's like Deadpool. or foster father, whatever you want to call it. The foster parent. It his. I he can't speak. Uh, well, sorry, you can't hear. I enjoyed that one more so than than the girlfriend. Yeah. But I should also note that I the guy was very endearing and sweet. You could see he reinforced the good side of Baby. Yeah. And Baby is always he never he adamantly refuses to shoot anyone or kill them adamant like directly. He adamantly refuses, um, or to cause harm. Like he he's just the driver. That's all he is. That's all he wants to be to this organization, and. He just wants out. That's his major note. He just wants to stop. And this parental figure is... Every scene he's in, I always enjoy. Because he, he, he... Again, he can't speak. Uh, he, he does sign language. Yeah, he can't... He knows he, what baby's up to. He's just looking out best for baby. Yep. But yeah, his, his m moments are uh, great. A little bit of hilarious, but a lot of heart. Yeah. And that is the relationship I like the most in the movie. Because you, you could see both actors did a great job. By the way... Uh, What's his name? John Berthal's in this film. He's in it for a short period of time. I enjoyed it. Who's John Berthal? The guy who plays Punisher in the, the Daredevil series. He's also... Oh, my God. Yeah, he's the, the Wall Street guy. Yeah. Well, no, he's not the Wall Street guy. He's, Isn't he? No, he was, one, he was the one driver in the first crew. He was the one guy in the first crew that didn't come back. He's, like, messing with Baby. Oh. Yeah. Did, he, did they kill him? What? Did they kill him? Uh, I honestly don't no. know. Cause... No, John Hamm, by the way, was the guy who... By the way, you think Jamie Foxx is going to be like the main bad guy because he keeps doing this? And then Baby kills him, and it turns out to be Buddy. Uh, okay, they, okay, he does directly kill one person in the movie, I will yeah, say that. Yeah, the Baby <laughs> directly speeds his car into a pole and goes through Jamie Foxx, which, to be fair... To be fair, I'm surprised he didn't go through the girl as well. Yeah. But, you know, it came close. And then, uh, on the flip side, you have... Uh, Buddy's, like, love interest, uh, 
darling, and uh, she again they it's like they go at each other. They have code names by the yeah. way. It's Buddy and Darling, or this couple essentially. Yeah. One's like an ex Wall Street trader. When, the other one is basically a hooker when, essentially. Yeah. When Darling Maybe. when Darling decides to double hold double assault rifles and open fire on Seven cops. Machine guns. A submachine gun, sorry. Open fire on cops with no cover in front of her, and they're like 20 cops. What do you think is going to happen? There's also some problems, uh, very tiny nitpicks of people getting the places, like how the hell did they get there? But, how did you escape? How did you know people were going to be there? Yes. Um. Yeah, there are a lot of li- Or how the hell does that... There's a Good Samaritan in this movie. I want you to draw... Okay, I'm going to describe this scene. Yeah. Good Samaritan sees... This is sees probably the most, like, WTF moment in the film. A a, a Good Samaritan yep. sees a bank robbery. Okay? Following hits, me? Hits them with the car. F- which is... Yep. Okay. Grabs his gun. Yep. Which per- is ni- it's like a 9mm. Yeah. It, perfectly reasonable. This is it Atlanta, fails, Georgia, so... Yeah, okay. It fails to stop him. So... I want you to think, what is the next thing this person is logically going to do to is ramp it, it up? Is it A, a shotgun, B, an assault rifle, three, uh, c- sorry, C, c not three, C, a submachine gun, a submachine gun, or D, he throws a grenade. Think about all these answers. Yes. Okay? You got it? It's the submachine gun. He literally whips out a submachine gun and opens fire on the bank robbers. Listen, we saw hell or high water, and I perfectly believed every person in, in Texas is holding. Don't yeah. get me wrong there. I can but also, a guy yeah. in Atlanta, Georgia, yep. with a submachine gun in his car. This is like an Uzi. This is just a strip Uzi. He just pulls out of his, not even his trunk. He pulls out of, like, the middle compartment yeah. next to the driver's seat. Pulls that sucker it's out. Hilarious. And just fires at him. Which, like, by the way, this guy also gets his car wrecked and nearly gets, you know, killed trying to stop these guys. Which, good Samaritan, yeah. I would give you props. Like, they, if there was one guy, I could de- I could definitely see someone. Oh, can we also make note that there was a guy who was going to see this movie, but he thought it was Transformers? Oh, yeah! I completely forgot about that. So, we go up. There's a guy in our seat. We bought our seats ahead of time. He's just in our seat. Yeah, like, plenty of time in advance, I'm looking, by the way. I look at my ticket, and it, it had my seat number. And I look at his ticket. It had the exact same seat number. So I'm like, something's wrong here. Something's wrong. So I go to the front and to the manager and be like, hey, uh, there's someone in my seat. Uh, can I just We even like, were like, hey, listen, is there another seat we could go to? We it's full. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Tuesday night. This film opens up. It's Cinemark, though, so we got, you know, it, it's a nice discount day. Whatever the case, we go back. He goes up to the person because, like, that doesn't sound right. He looks up. He, uh, sure enough. Sure enough. He's supposed to be in Transformers. And now he's an RC. So he's like, my bad. Even though the guy He let- walked out with the biggest smile on his face. Like, thanks, guys. Thanks for telling me. After we told him, like, we're here to see Baby Driver. It's like. Yeah. We got we got two for Baby Driver. I show him my tickets with Baby Driver on there. And he's like, huh. By the way, it took him like five minutes going through his stuff. This is a bigger guy. And then, of course, when I was done, like, it was like. There's something, I even, I there's even, something weird with my seat. And I, I, I kick it out. It's a pack of cigarettes he left behind. I, sure, thanks, dude. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, he had cigarettes on him. I, I was like, thanks. I'm, I, by the way, before you say anything, no, he, there, there was nothing in them. So he just like, he just grabbed a pair of cigarettes. Was like, I want to use my last one, and just left it on the seat. So I had to kick it off. I'm just like, thanks. But yeah, so we had that experience yeah that was what that a was nice guy fun. um check your seat check your tickets yeah make sure you take the tickets and god I, yeah I, 20 bucks says he I, there was a transformer showing right next door but that was like for 720 i'm glad i saw this i'm cause... pretty sure i'm pretty sure the guy was trying got out of transformers and just went to the next movie this is the same seat this still gets the idea of a darker film even though it's like a very light and bright and it's like you wouldn't expect that, but the few scenes that are dark, they do affect people. Yeah, yeah. I've re- again, it's like Shaun of the Dead. There's a yeah. lot of great comedy, but again, people's brains get pulled out. So yeah. it's it, it goes back and forth. It's I wouldn't say it's that gruesome, but there are some. De- there's a lot of blood. I would say the a- Jamie Fox hit is pretty gruesome. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the most gruesome. In any case, our final thoughts on the film: go see it. It's a yeah. high recommendation. It's better Skip than Transformers. Go see. The this. only thing I'd say that's worthwhile next to this movie right now is uh, Wonder Woman. Right now, those are, these are the two movies you want to see up until... We are not seeing Cars, by the way. No, We are God, not no. seeing Cars. By the way, Wonder Woman beat Cars. Suck it, Pix- Pixar. I don't, okay, I I don't really think like... it's really Pixar that wants the Cars sequel. I think it's Disney being like, this makes us a billion dollars in merchandise. Make us Cars 3. If they're like, okay. But Cars 2, it's like Cars 3 now. And they're like, all right. Yeah, so excited for The Incredibles. Um, but That anyway. one makes sense. It's a good film. But back on the note... 
Uh, if you're wondering what we're going to be seeing next, keep an eye out for Spider-Man Homecoming. Yep. But I think the next film we're going to see in a week is going to be War for the Planet of the Apes. We will have that review a week early. Yep. I if we are going, And maybe a special guest. We shall see. Oh, there'll be a special guest. And it's not Tally. Hopefully. It's nope. definitely not Tally. Yeah. We're going to need a new seat. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. There, so, we got plenty of chairs by the table. But in any capacity, um, yeah, that's going to be our film review. And hopefully you get to check out next one next week. Yep. But otherwise, it's been Gray Shot 17. All right, this is my part. And Gray Shot 151. And we'll see you all next time. Later, guys. Later, guys.